So we're standing next to a conifer that's about 12 feet tall. These trees can actually grow up to anywhere near 200 feet tall. And if we look closely, we see that we have scale-like leaves. And on the underside, those scale-like leaves have stomatal bloom that looks a little bit like a butterfly. So the butterfly appearance to the stomatal bloom and the bark that we'll talk about in a moment should all be clues as to this species. But go ahead and turn in your books to the key to North American conifers. So our first choice is leaves scale-like, all-like, or both. Arrangement may be decusate, ternate, or spiral, or leaves not as above. Well, we've already decided that these leaves are scale-like. So that takes us down to choice number two. So sprays of foliage, which are those segments of several twigs and leaves, lie flat and those leaves are scale-like, cones are woody, or sprays of foliage do not lie flat, they lie in several planes, leaves may be scale-like, all-like, or both, and the cones are woody or leathery. So these sprays of foliage are actually quite flat and the leaves are definitely scale-like. So that takes us to choice number five. Fine set of four leaves near end of branchlet. Each set is several times longer than wide. Overlapping leaves resemble a wine goblet <clears throat> where they meet. No bloom on either side. Leaf tips divergent from twig or oppressed. And the cones about one inch long resemble a duck's bill when closed and a flying goose when open. And they have three main scales. So if we look at these branchlets, first of all, we see that these scales are not oppressed like wine goblets. So it's not a calicegis decurrens. We don't have cones on this one, um, but it doesn't have those goose-like cones. And we already mentioned that on the underside, we have stomatal bloom. So then if the set of four leaves not as above, about as wide as long, leaf tips oppressed or divergent, no wine goblet, and some species have bloom, others don't, cone small, woody, round, or elongated. That takes us to choice number six. So ultimate sprays, which are sets of needles nearest the tip of the twig, are about 1 16th of an inch wide. The cones are small, round, and woody, or the ultimate sprays are about an eighth of an inch wide, so a little bit wider. The cones are small, less than a fifth of an inch, woody, cylindrical, and there are numerous pairs of decusate valvate scales. So we definitely have numerous pairs of these decusate scales. So it looks like we're looking at Tua Placata. So we just examined a Tua Placata that was probably about 12 years old. And here we have a Tua Placata that's probably closer to 100 years old. So what you'll notice on the more mature trees is that you start to develop this bark that has these really fine ridges. So it's not as deeply furrowed as something like your Pseudosuga menziesii or Douglas fir, but you still start to develop more of those ridges. The bark on your Tua Placata is typically anywhere from about three quarters of an inch to an inch in thickness, and it's really fibrous and thick. The wood is very dense and very resistant to rot. So anytime you'd like to build something that needs to be very rot resistant, this is excellent material. So whether it's siding, caskets, or even your planter boxes, this makes excellent material. It's often marketed as cedar, but as you probably remember, this is not a true cedar. This is Western red cedar to a placata.